And then there were only four out of a field of 68 for a men's 2024 NCAA tournament. We are down to the final four teams still standing in the chase for a national championship five days away in Phoenix, Arizona. Our coach, James Young, is here for a second consecutive segment. So, J.Y., let's go super big picture. Let's pull all the way back and see the bracket of 64 teams following the first four now over two weeks ago. When you look at the bracket and you see how it has played out, UConn, the champs of the East region, Alabama is the champs of the West, Purdue in the Midwest, and NC State, the 11 seed out of the South region. How are you going to remember what you have seen these previous two weeks to set up a Final Four in Phoenix on Saturday? Well, I think, honestly, if you look at it, you got to look at the conferences and how they performed. The Big 12, that was so well regarded as the best conference in America. They didn't get a team to the Final Four. They were they did not look good at all in a lot of these spots. You know, look at a, like the Mountain West Conference that was so valued and talked about. They didn't do well. You know, you look at the Big Ten, uh, you know, getting, you know, two teams to the Elite Eight. You look at the ACC with what they got. We thought the Blue Bloods, right? Carolina or Duke can make it to the Final Four. We got NC State. So and that's the beauty, Ben, of March Madness is you don't know. You can sit there and you can try and predict. You don't know what's going to happen. You're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids asking them to be better for 40 minutes. This isn't the NBA where it's chalk, right? You got to win four out of seven. The best team always wins. It doesn't happen in college. And that's the beauty of this game. You just, as a coach, has to tell your kids, it doesn't matter about seeds. It doesn't matter about records. It doesn't matter about how we play coming into the tournament. When we play this matchup, we just got to be better than the other team for 40 minutes. If we take a look at moving this into the Final Four, because it's a question that comes up every single year. Yes, you have the entire week off now, so you're not playing basketball every other day or every third or fourth day. You're going to get off until Saturday. Yeah. Now, also, it's regionality. We're going out to Arizona. No longer in the arenas, Coach, so the eye lines change. And also, as you talked about, there's still kids at heart. That is a big moment where you stand in a football stadium with roughly 100,000 people around you. The backdrops do change. We watch Connecticut absolutely dominate on the de facto home court through the regions. Same thing here. You take a look at Purdue in their same region. A lot of home court advantages with their fan base, which now is going to get split up and divided. Even though we have big favorites here coming on this weekend, talk to us about these teams entering into that neutral court environment where now the pra- – like even when you warm up in practice, Coach, for their Final Four practices, the place is packed. There's cameras everywhere. It really ramps up now. That means there's nerves. And there's going to be nerves, a lot of them, for three to four teams, which gives UConn a decided advantage, particularly, I would say, in the first half. I would be looking at first half unders, uh, but it's a little bit different, folks, in the fact that they get – usually what will happen is if you go to the Final Four, like teams that played yesterday, they travel back to campus, they're back there today, day off today, coaches are in the office this morning, they're breaking down film, they'll start pra- – they'll get their prep ready, they'll start practicing tomorrow, right? Final Four is on Saturday, they'll probably fly in Thursday morning, They'll get a Thursday afternoon practice, Friday, maybe a shoot around Saturday. So to me, they'll get a little bit more time, but it's like, you know, it's such a huge difference of sight lines, right? Particularly when you're looking at behind you, right? Behind the basket. You're now looking like a football field, right? Literally uh, behind you or a baseball field behind you. So to me, it's it's gonna it's going to uh, be a big difference. Uh, UConn should be more relaxed. Uh, you wonder if teams like, Alabama, and and we've talked about it, Ben and I, a team that shoots the three so much, do they go to the basket a little bit more early on and change what they do? Because the sight lines are going to be a major, major problem early on in that game. So let's dive right into these final four matchups and get some early handicaps from our coach and the insight on what we will see here. Five days for the markets to move either which way. UConn and Alabama, it's the nightcap on Saturday night in Phoenix. Connecticut in 11, in 11 and a half point favorite for our second final four matchup. The over-under is 161 and a half. J.Y., we have seen UConn win all 10 games in the last two years in the NCAA tournament. They have covered in all 10. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. 
But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number on Saturday in Phoenix? Uh, Estrada and Sears have to go off. Like, they, they got they, they got to win the guard battle, uh, those two, uh, versus Tristan Newton Cam, and Cam Spencer and, and Castle. They have to win that matchup. And then the other thing is this. As, as good as Grant Nelson has been at times, he is prone to foul trouble. And I think that is going to be my major, major concern is how do they deal with that wing ball screen action and deal with Don McClingan? You look at wing ball screen action, they are 30th percentile in the handler. That means that's Tristan Newton coming off that ball screen. Does he get busy? They're a little bit better to feeling the role uh, at 67th percentile. But so to me, that wing ball screen action, how you defend that is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Wing ball screen, dive the big, lift out of the corner. You have shooters everywhere. I think the defending the, the, of the wing ball screen, Donovan Klingon is going to be key, but also offensively, their two guards got to knock down shots. Game number one in the Final Four this weekend is going to be NC State taking on Purdue. That line of the FanDuel Sportsbook actually also opened up at 11.5 overnight, but has been bet down to 9.5 and, and a total of 145.5. So on paper, it seems like an easy victory for Purdue. But we just saw NC State play a big in Kyle Filipowski, obviously not on the same level as Zach Eady, but handle him, get him into foul trouble, and Burns had a good game. How do you attack Purdue, Coach, in this game? Is it to go at Eady, or do you say you try to move around Eady? Because if you can neutralize him, which is hard to do. He dropped 40 points yesterday. How is that going to be done by NC State? Well, it's interesting because, Donnie, they run a lot of pro-style offense at NC State, which is, they I call it the Garnett catch, which is you throw it to uh, DJ Burns about 15 feet away from the basket, allow him to back people down and have sight lines to pass. Well, <laughs> they're not going to send a double team with Zach Eady. So what I think you may see at NC State is more pick and pop action. DJ Burns has a sneaky good jump shot from about 15 feet. Maybe you go pick and pop action and let him try to attack Zach off the bounce. Now, the good thing about, uh, really, about this matchup is, <laughs> even though he's losing about, I don't know, six, seven inches, DJ Burns could be heavier than Zach Eady. So he may be able to get into his body a little bit, try and finish with the ball away from him. Uh, but to me, that's the matchup. you got to look inside. And if you are... Purdue, you are going inside of Zach Eady because if you look at a guy like DJ Burns, he gets into foul trouble. He sometimes is lazy. That jump hook uh, right there in the hole is the key. If they can get Zach Eady going, we'll go from there. And then lastly, NC State has done a really good job defending the three-point line. Purdue, shaky at times. Can Purdue knock down enough shots to make them pay? Duke yesterday, just 5 of 20, as J.Y. mentioned. Marquette on Friday night was 4 of 31. Purdue did not mm. shoot it well yesterday, just 3 of 15, but still the number one three-point shooting team in all of the country.